Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope everyone's doing well out there. As you can see, I'm doing a little bit of work on the headstock of the PV Mod Repair Guitar. So, what I got going on over here is I already cleaned the headstock, sanding it down to bare wood, kind of sanding around the serial number so that's still there. Scuff over, over it a little bit, but I didn't hit it with the 220 grit sandpaper. Uh, I'm kind of like went over it with some 400 instead of the 220. 220 would probably be too aggressive and wipe that completely off of there. Uh, I didn't want to do that. So I only hit it with the 220 around that area and then hit with four, uh, 400 over that. That way the clear or rub on poly that I'm using right now has something to stick to when I apply it. So I cleaned up the edges of the headstock so I got a nice nice line going around there now you know there was some paint that kind of was dripping down the sides over here so it's nice and it's 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 nice nice and clean straight lines really good I ended up redrilling out the holes for the tuners um, filled the you know as best as I could I filled up the holes for the old tuners well because it's a different wood you want to see them especially after you clear it now I went through each hole, okay, in steps. And I don't mean using a step drill. In case you're kind of wondering, you know, these are what uh, step drills look like. So what I ended up doing is I started off with four drill bits. One of them was basically real close to the size of the hole. Uh, a little bit bigger, just a tiny bit bigger. And I just kept drilling these out and with the different drill bits until the tuners fit in there so now the tuners fit real nice they're not stuck inside there you know they're not so you can still move them still move the tuner it's not uh, real tight it's snug but it's not going to cause me any problems where when I tighten them up on the top nut they're not going to split the wood or anything that should work out just perfect so right now I'm just finishing up the headstock over here so I could put the last coat of rub on poly on there and I'll show you how I do that in a minute now I don't use uh, shirt material or t-shirt material when I do rub on poly the reason why is even if you buy a bag which says like lint free t-shirt material for basically doing staining and stuff uh, there is some lint inside of it still you can't get rid of it all the edges of the t-shirts where it's been cut fray a little bit you can get some like little tiny hairs from that material what I would use is just bounty paper towel and uh, it works out really really good so I'm gonna wipe this down see if I can get all the dust completely off of it I'm gonna take some compressed air so this might get a little noisy get rid of whatever other dust is on there now after I get done with this headstock, I mean totally completed where it's got the clear on it the way that I want it and uh, dried, I'm going to take 1500 grit sandpaper and I'm going to go over the back of this neck. What that's going to do is going to break the sheen off the neck to where your hand doesn't grip it that much. It's going to make it nice and soft. So you should be able to play really fast, really quick um, on a nice smooth neck. So what I got here, just some basic rub on poly shaken not stirred and I end up taking just a small piece of paper towel now you don't want to wet the edges of the paper towel when you're doing this so I'm, I fold this a few times pull it once this way once this way and another this way so what I have here are uncut edges when I mean uncut, you know, the machine that usually puts the holes inside of the paper towel to where you can peel them apart real easy. These are uncut edges. And I'm going to apply some of the rub on poly to that. And this doesn't take a lot. I mean, just a little bit is going to do, do fine. And I'm just going to apply it. Just wipe it on. Make sure coating the whole surface, not just pieces of the surface. 
and get around the edges without getting it on the top staying away from try to stay away from the rosewood as possible make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies So she's pretty much coated. If I see any like little air bubbles on here, I will go over it slower than I did the first time. And it kind of helps get rid of those air bubbles. And as you see, there's nothing on the headstock, but I'm going to go and take and just go over the edges of the headstock with a clean part of this rag and just make sure that there is nothing on the headstock so that's going to dry and while that's drying I'm going to work on the body a little bit all right so the other day I was outside working on the yard and getting the winter shit cleaned up and all the crap from leftover fall picked up and bagged up and raked up the yard and kind of gave myself some nice blisters from the handle from the rake you know, it's been a year since I've done that, so in fact, yeah, pretty much. It's spring, what can I say? Gotta get things done. Lo and behold, an Amazon truck pulls up and drops off the new bridge. Yeah, I was kind of uh, excited and happy about that at the same time because this is supposed to be missing in action. Yeah, so I got two of them now. So one of them will be coming a little bit later. Uh, well, spare parts. Here's the old bridge. Now it's pretty much a basic, um, I don't know, like a squire fender bridge, okay, where it's got the, the saddles are stamped, so they have like an S shape to them. I kind of don't like these because these holes will get stripped out pretty easily. The reason why I replaced this one is because all the set screws are missing to adjust your action height, and uh, I don't have any spare ones. so. I ordered the new one. So the new one comes with the bridge, comes with the springs, the claw, all the screws, Allen key, and a whammy bar. So I don't know if the guy who owns it still has the whammy bar or not, but uh, I'm gonna get to mounting a new bridge. All right, so the first things first is I'm gonna fit the new tremolo in there. All these holes line up, they line up just perfect. I'm going to use all the new screws. I'm not going to use the old screws for this. Everything looks like it's pretty much the same. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of get these guys started here. The holes are already pre threaded from the old screws and they feel very solid so I don't think I'm gonna have to do anything as far as like re-drilling or filling holes or anything nothing was stripped out when I ended up doing this the first time so what I'm gonna end up doing in order to make my life a lot easier and to make this go a little bit faster let's get my drill out put a chuck inside there with a Phillips bit and drive these guys in. Now I'm not going to force them in really really tight or super fast. Alright, so now what I'm going to do next is a look at this is right now it's free right now it's kind of like free floating so I'm going to drive these in a little bit more to where it just touches just touches the top of the bridge Now what I want to do is I want to check to see if this bridge is picked 
up at any spot. No. No, she's sitting flat on top of the body. I'll check these screws out over here. Now you're not tightening this thing down like you're mounting it. You want to leave these up a little bit, but not up enough to where it's going to be making the bridge pop up in the back. So what I'm looking for is basically just that. And I'm going to have to loosen up one or two of these. Find out which one is making it stand up a little bit. Making sure they all look about the same. And they do. Well, I got one that's up a little bit higher. A couple of them that are up just a little bit higher than the rest. So that one I could bring down. Alright. Looks like Looks like I pretty much got it at all. Now these saddles are so, like solid blocks. They're not uh, uh, stamped metal like the other ones. But what I do notice here is I gotta adjust these guys because some of these screws are sticking up way too much of an angle on some of these. And I kinda wanna level all these off because they're not leveled off. And I'll explain why when I put the strings on it. That's better. Much better. Alright, so that's that. Next thing I want to do is put these springs on. I'm not going to change out this claw because there's nothing wrong with it. I am going to get rid of that wire and put my wire there. And I am going to use the new springs. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now Let's see configuration here it's one it's two So let's see if any of these pop out while using the trim. Something you don't like to do. Nope, feels good. Feels good. Okay, so that part's done. I'll readjust the springs in the back of it uh, after I get some strings on there. But this is kind of like a real important thing right now because once that neck dries i'll end up checking to see if i have to shim up the back over here now the next thing i need to do is to basically kind of fit this a little bit to see where this is going to end up because i think i'm going to have to yep i'm going to have to trim a little bit the edges on each side of the pick guard because this is a little bit bigger, this bottom plate is a little bit bigger than the old one, not by much. Alright, so this next step that I'm doing here is something that I didn't forget to do. I wanted to fit everything first, make sure there wasn't going to be any issues or anything going to be in the way of each other and everything would work properly. Uh, I mean, kind of like helping out these springs a little bit so they don't cause noise. And what I've been doing is just a little bit of string tubing over the spring. I already have one spring removed here. Open up the string tubing. Slide the spring inside of it. You know, and that's pretty much good because this is going to shrink up and it's going to tighten up around, around the spring. Not much. You can still move the string tubing in and out of the spring. I don't heat it up so much where it squishes around the spring where the spring is not going to be active anymore or work properly. 
and just heat these guys up. You know, give them a little bit of heat, shrink them up just enough to where they start to form around the spring. Like I said, I could turn and move the sleeve in and out of the spring, but it's going to help with that noise that you get every time, like when you use a tremolo or if you bump the guitar, you get that springy noise. It's going to help with that. See, you don't hear it, you hear it. really now I can hit these all I want and they're quiet and since they slide and they move a little bit they will move when you use the spring they're not going to sit there and put any resistance on the spring to where the spring won't go back to home where it's supposed to be now I'm done you guys take it easy. Have a good one. Just a little update.